Well, good morning. Welcome to another Daybreak Show. Today I'm drinking a Colombian coffee that I roasted three days ago. <clears throat> a darker roast and then put it in an airtight container for three days and then ground it up, hand ground it today. And then put it in the French press. And I have become pretty happy with this method where I roast about a pound a week. It works super well for me. Today's show is sponsored by the Grondike Soap Company, which makes the pheromone soap. And this is their shirt. Been really happy with it. I have been a long time proponent of using pheromones and there have been many, many studies done. Some people say it's been disproven. Let me put it this way. When I put myself back on the market, I had game. I had taken care of myself physically. But there's something that's unseen, and that's the what I would just call like the attractor factor. It's kind of a a mating factor, and I'm not looking to mate with anybody anymore. Those days are long gone. I'm looking for companionship, but chemically you still attract people. There's a link below for the soap. You'll see. You use soap every day anyways, right? Why not use something that's number one, made by a man, number two, made in America, number three, something that's going to give you an edge with the opposite sex. I was invited to the Valley Forge Leader Leaders Breakfast Prayer Breakfast. It's been an annual event for a couple decades. Lots of interesting VIPs, inspirational. And I'm also allowed to bring a guest. And what the heck? I'm going to go. So, who can I bring? That's what I'm thinking. If you have pets, what if you die? Who will take care of and love your pets the way that you do when you're gone? Someone is going to be making a decision about your pets even before you're in the ground. It's pretty trippy if you think about it. The five rules of happiness for men. One, she has a sense of humor. Two, she can cook. Three, she and you travel well. Four, she is a great lover. And five, make sure that each of the women above never find out about each other. Don't kid yourselves, boycotts do work. Stupidity is very costly. She used to work in a diner. Never saw a woman look finer. I used to order just to watch her float across the floor. Neil Young, unknown legend, 1992. I have a musician friend that a lot of people know, and he went through a breakup recently, and his songwriting is going to be great if he plays his cards right. My advice is get out that pen and paper, dude, and don't let those emotions go to waste. When someone you work with gets terminated and you like that person, don't be afraid to tell them, wish them well and keep that door open. Bridges don't need to be burned. They and the boss may not have gotten along, but that has nothing to do with you. If possible, be at peace with everybody. I say make pies in the face great again.
When you die, people will pick through your shit. Most of your shit is going to end up in a thrift store or on the curb on trash day. A few people will take some valuable mementos. But pretty much nothing you have done or own will carry on. Pretty depressing, right? That's why I say start thinking about forever stuff. What children's hospital animal rescue will be the beneficiaries of your wealth when you die? Your kids are going to blow through your money. Your wife will. <clears throat> well, we won't get into that. So is there a foreverness factor built into your plan? I was thinking about James Barry, one of my favorite authors. I would challenge you to get into James Barry. He's a good guy. I... I read his biography. He was barely five foot three, just a little tiny guy. The average age of a average height of a woman is five foot four. He was below that. And he was little. He was a slight man. And rather than getting beat up, he could talk his way out of things. He became a storyteller. He ended up writing many, many novels and his friends were incredible, other incredible authors. He wrote Peter Pan, which is what he's known for, and one of my favorite books of all time called My Lady Nicotine, which you guys that are into pipe smoking and cigars, you need to, it's downloadable, it's public domain right now, but an incredible book, and the illustrations in the book are just out of this world. You're just going to love them. And when he died, the royalties from Peter Pan went to a children's hospital and support that children's hospital. And that, now he was born in 1860, died in 1937. And the royalties from that book are still helping sick children today. Think about where you want your wealth to go. It's not an accident. For most people, it's an accident where their money goes, like to a person, to a foundation. Make sure you know where it goes and don't let anyone else make that decision after you're gone. Who the hell wants to be an old, miserable, lonely dude with game? The years can fly by and you're all bitter. Being bitter is not game. That's called being a sore, lazy-ass loser. A friend in the medical field said a patient answered a questionnaire. It, this, this was the question. What are your hobbies and interests? The dude answered, hunting, fishing, and women. I said 50 years ago, every man answered the question like that. Today, not so much. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. The devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. Many red pill thought leaders were blue pill prior to their awakening. Show me one who has never dealt with the matrix. Not every G that you know was always a G. I bought my first firearm at 14, and you could in New York. I was 14 years old. It was a 22 caliber bolt action rifle with a seven round clip. I became a great shot at a very early age, and, but this was different than my dad's guns. I bought it myself. I shot it, cleaned it, sighted it. I used to go to a gully alongside train tracks and set up cans and bottles and do 50 yard and 25 yard target practice. Walking down the tracks, carrying a gun. It was a different era. Cops would come by, smile on their face. Have fun, young man. Be careful. Thank you, officer. That's how the world was back then. A 14-year-old carrying a gun down train tracks now. 
things would be just a little bit different, right? I made beef jerky for the first time. Posted pictures of it. I don't know where I posted pictures of it. Might have been Instagram, definitely on Twitter. And now I can never buy beef jerky again. That's one of those things. When you do it yourself, you always make it better when you do it yourself. Himalayan salt, black pepper. So now I've grown my own tobacco, roasted my own coffee, dried my own jerky. And it came out great. It's better to surf than to be a surf. When an alcoholic dies, nobody says, what a shock. It's always, what a shame. Oh, honey bunny, after your girl's night out, can you stop at the store and pick up some soy milk and tofu? We're all out. Thank you, sweetie. Ravaged sheets, blankets, pillows all over the place, empty water bottles on each nightstand. That's a good sign. Tornado bedrooms and flat stomachs go hand in hand. 99% of your friends have TV remotes, Twix wrappers, empty Dorito bags, and Diet Coke bottles on their nightstand. I challenge you, be a one percenter. <clears throat> I've had very little personal loss in my life. A little bit, not a lot. Fortunate for my age. It just so happens everybody I love is alive. And I know that changes fast as you get older. Today is the one year mark for the passing of a friend's mom. And I know that was very hard for that person, the one year mark. Tell, if, you, if you've experienced loss, please comment down below about how the one year marker was for you and the two year, the five year, the 10 year. Explain. Other people will be reading your comments and be getting relief and help from what you say because I believe you have something to say. Nothing says somebody cheated like joint Facebook pages. Jack and Amy Smith. It doesn't take much to be in the top 1% of men visually, just walk 25% faster than everybody, put crisp creases in your shirts, when the trend is everyone else looking like they slept in their clothes, straighten your spine and be two inches taller. See, I'm slumped over like this. Now, when I straighten my spine, it just makes me taller. My shoulders are back, my chest is out, my stomach is in. I all of a sudden get taller. Get up an hour earlier and spend two hours a day doing self-improvement, whether that be reading, working out, or whatever. Virtue signaling, the practice of publicly expressing opinions or sentiments in intended to demonstrate your good character and moral correctness of one's position on a particular issue. It's funny now how virtue signaling is saying what you don't believe in or what you don't approve of. And this is one of the reasons why I love the creeds, like the Apostles' Creed the Nicene Creed, because it says, I believe. It's not a creed of, I don't believe this, 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 and this. I met a woman many years ago. She was the secretary. It was my first job out of graduate school. She says, oh, I, I go to XYZ Church. I said, oh, okay. I noticed like a Bible on her desk or something. I said, oh, you have a Bible. Are you a Christian person? She says, yes, I am. I said, oh. She goes, uh, I go to XYZ Church. I won't even say the name of it because I don't want to embarrass anybody. I said, so what is, it, what is it like? How is it? And she says, well, we don't drink. We don't dance. We don't use drugs. We don't use this. We don't. And she gave me a list of about 10 things they don't do. 
And the first thing that went through my mind was, what do you do? Who here has a bug out bag ready to go? Raise your hand. Your teeth don't have to be perfectly straight, but they do have to be white and your breath better be unnoticeable. A woman will shut you down like that, if that's not in order. She said to me, I like how you lightly put your hand on the small of my back as we leave theaters and restaurants. It makes me feel secure. Young men, learn the subtle behaviors of the G. They're not always overt. They're not always on display. If you're red-pilled, which just means your eyes are opened and you're awakened, that doesn't always mean you're bearing the sword and shield. Women have said to me that they're envious of my ability to enjoy solitude, not talk, read for hours, enjoy a sunrise or a sunset by myself, enjoy a pipe or a cigar or a cocktail alone. And when you live like this, people notice. They want what you have. You can't teach it. You are it. I've always been drawn to films about elderly couples, even years before I was elderly. <laughs> I was also a film minor in college and a solo moviegoer my entire life. So here's a basic list to start and watch these trailers first. Pro I think they're profound. The Leisure Seeker, Lay Weekend, 45 Years, The Wife, Still Mine, and See You in My Dreams. You're going to love them. After divorce or breakup, it's easier for a man's body to move on. In other words, you can replace the body on the other side of the bed like that. Just like that. A man gets divorced, he's in his own apartment, or his wife moves out, he's alone. You can have another person in that bed within hours, days, or a week, easily. But the mind and the heart are a different story. The reason is because of what you trained yourself to do. It's easier said than done, but it can be done to train your mind and your heart. If you keep saying, I don't know what I would do without her, guess what? If she's gone, you won't know what to do without her. You're my reason for living, he says. Then when she's gone, he has no reason to live. Train yourself to be a survivor. Train your heart and your mind that you're going to make it no matter what. That's being anti-fragile. That's taking extreme ownership, not just of your body. Because some of the biggest pussies I know have muscles. I know because I counsel them almost every single day. And you know what they say to me? You know what those guys say to me? I know I sound like a pussy now. So I'm not insulting them. Those are words that came out of their mouth, not mine. Train yourself to survive, and I'm not talking about being like a survivalist and this kind of stuff, although that probably doesn't hurt. You will survive. How about being a prepper emotionally and with matters of the heart? I don't think our will is, is as free as some would have you think. If a bird escapes a cage and flies around the house thinking it's free, is it really free? 
Compared to being in the cage, it appears to be free. Yes, there's people that look younger than they are. Rare, but yes. I say go for the person that looks great for their age and has youthful energy rather than youth. That's good counsel. You can fire your company without firing your boss. How? Stay on good terms with them. Company shit usually rolls down from the top and your boss is feeling the crap too. So you might end up collaborating with that person in the future. Burn bridges with the entity, not the person. Unless you have to. I have a friend, Rolo Tomasi, who wrote the book called The Rational Male. Positive Masculinity and Preventive Medicine. And his blog, The Rational Male Blog, just Google that, Rational Male. Long articles. Most of them are fairly long with a lot of data, not a lot of opinions, a lot of data and some great interpretation there. Someone said, um, oh, those are just too long, I'm not going to read. They're too long-winded. Well, here's my response to that. Refusal to read the rational mail and the long-winded articles is good for my coaching business. Usually the men that refuse to read things like that do get quite long-winded in their counseling sessions as I hand them a box of tissues after their life has unraveled. They can't stop talking about their pain. They get quite long-winded. It's better to be spending time reading long-winded articles now and helping yourself rather than be long-winded later. I respect writers of all types, newsletter dudes, novelists, graphic novelists, playwrights, copywriters. James Barry, like I said, his royalties from Peter Pan still fund a children's hospital. My favorite all-time author, C.S. Lewis, said, I pray because I can't help myself. I pray because I'm helpless. I pray because the need flows out of me all the time, waking and sleeping. It doesn't change God. It changes me. Who not to have a relationship with? Write this down. Your coworkers, your boss, your neighbor, a client, some thought that you met at a bar, a friend's girl, anyone at church, anyone's wife, your second cousin, sex bots, anyone from the liquor store, low-hanging fruit, anyone medicated, and anyone when you're lonely. And people responded, well then, sounds like I can't meet anyone ever. No, the, that's, those are the typical relationship avenues or sexual avenues for so many men. How about this? This is what I think is good. A mutual interest group, a meetup group, and not a singles group, a meetup group of mutual interest, hiking, hobbies, reading, book clubs, exercise, anything like that. It's a great place to start. People say, well, what if you're a Christian? Church is not a good place? No, no, I didn't say that. Your church is not a good place. It's a place for you to worship, not to cruise for chicks. Because if shit ever goes down, guess what? You still got to look at each other. And everyone is going to know your dirt. And if it's happened to you, you know what I'm talking about. All right. We're going to wrap it up here. One last one. Do you really think you'd meet a high-quality person in that bar or club and then you foolishly married them? Go ahead, do it again. Touch that hot stove. Seeds of foolishness grow to full-grown trees of bitter regret that bear fruit year after year. Have a great day, everyone.